have not I written to thee excellent things in counsel and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. Let's pray. Father, thank you now for the time to gather here in the Bible Baptist Church and the fellowship of God's people, the singing of praises to you who alone is worthy. Uh, Father, you have to stoop, we realize, just to behold the, uh, the children of men. And yet, Father, if it please you tonight that uh, by your Holy Spirit, which is in each of us that is saved, but collectively there's a, 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 a power there that's maybe not there when we're separate. By the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord, you would anoint my lips to say exactly what you'd have to say, no more and no less, and that the devil would be rebuked in our midst, the unclean spirits driven out, the things that would distract us, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, that they not choke the word tonight. If there is somebody here, Lord, who's lost, still wandering through life, has no idea what's going to happen to them, I pray that they'd give some real thought to eternity. And Lord, those of us who are saved, we too would give some thought to eternity. What's going to happen as far as our rewards, hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant, gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble, and that we might be, have a greater concern for those that are lost. Bless now, and fill me with the Holy Ghost, I ask, and we thank you for this time to gather here together, and we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen and amen. You may be seated. The book of Proverbs, as we said, was written by, humanly speaking, by uh, most of it by uh, Solomon, the son of David. He's called the wisest man in the Bible, probably the wisest man that ever lived. He, he had wisdom as well as knowledge. He had a lot of knowledge, also wisdom. Um, and uh, he tells about things in life. A lot of them are just everyday things, uh, oh, things like, uh, um, it is naught, it is naught, saith the buyer. But when he's gone his way, then he boasts of <laughs> You know, the fellow comes in there to buy that car, and he, said, he, he gives him down as far as he can. And, and uh, uh, he said, hey, man, he said, you're, you're beating me. You're cheating me. You're, this, you're overcharging me for this thing, but i got to have it. So he'll sign on the dotted line. Goes out and runs in with his first friend. He said, man, you ought to see what a deal I got. <laughs> That's just human nature. And a lot of Proverbs is human nature. And uh, it, to be a successful Christian... Uh, and to be a good witness, you've got to understand something about human nature because uh, uh, the people you deal with are human beings. The people you're going to run into and cross paths with uh, all your life, they're uh, human beings. They're, they're sinners like you and I. They're uh, uh, inconsistent sometimes. They have their quirks and their ups and downs, and, uh, and uh, so you need to learn that. And uh, that's what the book of Proverbs is, is written so that you'll understand human nature in others, and also in yourself, amen. So uh, that's the book of Proverbs, and we get down, and most of them are very short little, you know, the wicked does such and such, but he that's a righteous man does this, and the righteous do this, and the ungodly do that, and it's sort of a back forth, back forth type of thing, but then you hit a little section here where for about five verses it's a little bit different, and Solomon says, uh, it doesn't tell who he, actually he's talking to, maybe one of his sons, uh, bow down, in verse 17, thine ear. He said, get your ear up close to me, and hear the words of the wise, which he was himself, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. And of course, it's, in a sense, it's God the Father speaking to us. And uh, he says, it's a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. Keep the words of God. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. You know the old saying? This book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. And if you get the Word of God in your heart, uh, it, it'll keep you out of, of a lot of problems and help you to do a lot of things that are right. So he says, uh, apply thine heart to my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. It's very pleasant to God. It brings him pleasure uh, if you keep his words. Uh, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that, that thy trust may be in the Lord. Better to trust in the Lord, the Bible says, than to put confidence in man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. Uh, God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Uh, you need to learn to trust God and walk. And sometimes you'll, you'll look like you're looking at the side of a mountain. And uh, God says, go forward. Amen. And that's when you've got to trust the Lord. 
It's easy to trust the Lord when you're out on the Sea of Galilee and rolling along and there's a two or three mile an hour gentle breeze blowing and the fish have been biting the night before and you've hauled a bunch of them in there and you're going back and man, we're going to make it. It's going to be good today. A whole different thing when you're out there and the waves are kicking up about as high as this curtain here and that boat's rocking up and down and, and you're not sure you're going to make it and you row three, you row three strokes and the wind blows you back four. Uh, that's the time when you, you find out whether you really got the victory. So he says, uh, uh, Trust in the Lord, I have made known to thee this day even to thee. Then these words, Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? God says, I've written to you some excellent things. Amen. Counsel and knowledge. That I might make thee know, and then these words, the certainty of the words of truth that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send to thee. He said you can know the certainty of the words of truth. Amen. There's th the Bible you can count on, amen? Yep. amen? Other religious books, they come and go. Amen. Uh, commentaries on the Bible, they come and go. Yep. Uh, philosophers have come and they've gone. Yes, but the Bible stands, that's that song, with the Bible stands, though the earth may tremble, the, all the... The Bible stands. Amen. And there's things you can know in the Bible that are certain. Now, there's some things in the Bible I, I still ain't figured out. <laughs> right, Brother Miles? Amen, brother. I heard Dr. Ruckman say one time, he said he was saved in 1949. And he said about 1975, I'd read the Bible through over 100 times. And he said, in my human mind, I think, he said, I think I've got this book mastered. And by the time he read it through the next two more times, he said, I'm pretty sure I don't have it mastered. <laughs> and that's, that's the amazing thing about the Bible. You can take any book in the world and read it through two or three times. you got everything it's, it's got yep. to say. You watch the same movie, you've seen it the third time, you, you know exactly what they're going to do in the next scene, right? But not the Bible. Amen. I, I, honestly, I have read the Bible through, and all of a sudden I said, wait a minute. That word was not there the last 25 times I read it. Some of you nod, you know what, I said, how did I miss that? It's so obvious, and that's the word of God. I want to preach tonight, though, God being my helper, I want to preach on some things you can know for certain. The certainty of the word of God. Now, usually I preach, I told my wife, I think this is the 13th time I've preached this message. Usually it's in a rescue mission or a jail or a drug rehab program. Y'all feel right home. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of put, I've only once or twice preached this where I thought most of the folks were saved, but it has an application to, the, to those that are saved. So if I kind of bark at you a little like, you know, I think you're a bunch of low life, uh, uh, you know, who knows telling what you, where you've been and what you've been doing, it's just because that's the sort of the gendry of this message. So bear with me, and I want to talk about some things that you can know for certain. It doesn't make any difference what religious background you have, whether you're a Baptist, whether you're a Southern Baptist, whether you're a Methodist, a Presbyterian, Church of God, Assembly of God, whatever. If you have any belief in the Bible at all, I'm going to give you four or five things that are absolutely as certain as certain can be. And they're so basic that you think, well, everybody knows that. But it's amazing how in the average church you don't hear this preach much anymore. Now, the old-time preachers used to preach this. And that's where I've gotten a lot. I, I've listened to fellows like, I'm, I actually heard Bob Jones Sr. preach in person. I took him over to the radio station when I was up at Bob Jones University. Now, don't get up. <laughs> when I went to Bob Jones University before most of you were born, every Friday night, every Saturday, we were out on the streets doing evangelism or in the prisons or preaching someplace. I mean, it was... It was a hot place back then. And I can remember taking him to the radio station every morning. I had to pick him up during the summertime when I was working on the campus police force. And I'd pick his brain. <laughs> I'd ask him questions. And uh, he'd always give you a straight answer. 
Uh, I remember Phil Oliver Green. I remember Percy Ray. How many ever heard Percy Ray preach? Okay. That's the kind of stuff that I, I, I totally gravitate toward. So I want to talk very briefly. Uh, now, preachers lie, so it may not be too briefly, but... Uh, you know, it's like Paul over in Philippians. In chapter 3, verse uh, 1, I think he says, Finally, my brethren. Yeah. <laughs> and then in chapter 4, he says, And finally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Little boy asked his daddy, he said, Daddy, what does that mean when the preacher takes his watch off and lays it on the pulpit? <laughs> he said, It doesn't mean anything, son. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but I'll try and have you out of here at a reasonable hour. All right. Number one, I want to say something you can know for sure. You can know that sin is bad. Sin is not good. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says be sure your sin will find you out. The Bible says sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Sin, sin, sin. You can almost hear the serpent when you say the sin. And this world may try and dress sin up. They may look at, make it look respectable. There are no drunkards anymore. They're alcoholics. You know. uh, there's, no, uh, there's no sodomites and, and uh, homosexuals. There's uh, uh, persons of, uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, not even deviant behavior of, of, uh, of an alternate lifestyle, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and folks aren't, uh, folks aren't, they used to call them hobos and bums. <laughs> now he's simply a transit or a homeless person. Right. And, and I'm not trying, I mean, th there's fellows, I've talked to them who have gotten in that situation, usually by bad choices. Yeah. And, but, but it's sin is dressed up or covered over so much, but you can be absolutely certain that sin is bad. Sin is going to get you in trouble. You go through the Bible, Cain hated his brother, and that sin led to him killing him. Achan coveted that golden wedge in the Babylonish garment, and it caused 36 men in Israel to get killed, and he and his whole family were executed because of it. David, wandering up on the top of the uh, the uh, palace that night looks over and he sees Bathsheba there and the little thought running through his mind and that thought begins to generate and it becomes an idea and it becomes an inquiry and it becomes, well, let me talk with her and you know the story before it's all over. He's not only committed adultery, he had her husband murdered. His, her husband was one of his loyal uh, under-captains of the army. Uh, he, her, her grandfather was his counselor, and he betrayed all of those people because of sin. The Bible says, and be sure your sin will find you out. Sin, I don't, it doesn't make any difference what they call it or how they, and, and like I say, the world tries to dress it up. I see where they've just recently passed a bill up in the United States Congress that the possession of marijuana will no longer be a, a crime if it's under a certain amount. They're trying to ease it over. I, I do a drug rehab program on uh, Monday nights down at a, a place in a, in a rehab center, and I've asked those fellows, I, you know, and most of them, they've smoked pot, they've, they've sold it, they've done everything, and they're trying, some of them trying to get their lives straightened out. I said, let me ask you something. I said, you guys who got on hard drugs, did you first smoke marijuana? And almost every head. Yes, yep. sir. And then I said something to else. I said, how many of you smoked marijuana before you smoked tobacco? Almost every one of them started, they smoked tobacco first. Yes, sir. And then they were used to, yes, sir. and then the marijuana came around, well, hey, and the drug dealer, he gets them smoking a few joints, and then the next time he puts something a little harder in there to get them addicted to it, see? And sin will lead you downhill. And listen, I don't care how old you are or how young you are. I don't care what kind of background you have. 
Sin will always lead you down the wrong road. And sin is not good. People can call it whatever they want, but sin is sin. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Right will never be wrong, and wrong will never be right. And if 10,000 people believe that wrong is right, it's still wrong. It doesn't make any difference. Sin is bad. Amen. And if there's somebody here, and I usually at this point say one of you young folks, but now you got some older folks Amen. dabbling around in it. Amen. I, I had a relative in my family. She became an alcoholic when she was over 80 years of age. Wow. Now, it was partially because she was, didn't have any family there in the home and nothing to do, and, and it was, she was having trouble going to bed at night. So some well-meaning soul said, well, Betty, what you need is take a little toddy before you go to bed. And she was a small-framed woman, and one toddy would put her in Never Never Land. <laughs> and my sister went out with her one time, and they were at dinner, and she ordered a drink, a little old thing like that. Said the next thing she knew, she didn't know where she was. And that's how you get sin is always, they say, sin will take you further than you wanted to go. Amen. It'll keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And it will make it much more difficult for you to get back. Amen. I'm sure the prodigal son, he got to the far country in a hurry. Yep. But the road back, barefoot walking, that was slow. Amen. I told those fellows down the drug rehab thing, I said, fellas, you didn't get into this overnight. You've gotten down, you've gotten into a habit, you, you dealt with it. It's going to take you a while to get off of some of this stuff. Even getting saved and with the grace of God. Amen. Some of them asked me, said, said tobacco. Well, what, what's the best way to, to, to get off of it? One guy said, cold turkey. I said, if you can do it cold turkey, do it. Somebody else said, I got a, I got a nicotine patch here on my arm. If that'll help you, do it. <laughs> said, what's the best way to get off of uh, tobacco? Whatever way you can use to get off of it, just get off of it, Amen. <laughs> Amen. And sin is always bad. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what kind of uh, studies they've done, anything else. Sin is always bad. Yep. I remember Brother Jack Hiles telling this story. I only heard, it, heard him tell it one time. He said when he was a little boy, his mother basically had to manage the family. His father was an alcoholic. He said he, said he was a drunk. And he spent up all his money on liquor. And he said, as far back as I can remember as a little kid, and I mean two, three, four years old, Mama had a ritual she went through with me. Maybe you heard this story. No. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mama would get me in there, and she'd get, look right in there, and she said, Jackie, I want to tell you about something. What's that, Mama? And she had a magazine. She pulled it out and said, Do you see that, Jackie? He said, Yes, ma'am. And she pointed and said, Do you know what that is? He said, Yes, ma'am. What is that, Jackie? That's alcohol. It was an advertisement for liquor. She said, Jackie, alcohol is bad. Amen. It's bad, bad, bad. And then she'd say, Jackie, what is alcohol? He'd say, it's bad, Mama. Amen. She'd say, how bad is it? A little old three-year-old, three he says, it's bad, bad, <laughs> bad, Mama. Amen. Amen. And then she'd take and tear that page out of the magazine, and she'd crumple it up, and she'd throw it on the ground. She said, Jackie, is that bad? She, he said, that's bad, Mama. And then she'd take and she'd go, bad, 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 bad. Amen. Amen. And he'd say, it's bad, Mama. She said, you do it, Jackie. He said, I'd take my little three-year-old foot and I'd go, it's bad, 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 bad. Amen. And he said, I did that coming up my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. We went, and he said, when she got that magazine out, I knew it was coming. Amen. 
He said, I joined the, when I was 18, I think, he joined the army, went in the paratroopers, right, toward the, right close to the end of World War II. And I think he became a parachute rigger. And he was going off to basic training and then parachute school and all that. And it was several months later he came back. He said, by now, you know, I'm several inches taller than my mother. And I came back home for just a few days on leave and talked with Mama and told her how much I missed her. And she asked about what we were doing and all that and, and uh, stayed a few nights there. Got ready to leave that morning and said I had to catch the bus back to the base. And he said, Jackie, now he said, you've been a good boy while you've been in the Army, haven't you? He said, yes, ma'am, I have. He said, you haven't done anything that make Mama ashamed. Well, you know, Mama, I haven't. You let those boys know that you're a Christian, haven't you? Yes, Mama, I've tried the best I can. She said, okay. She got ready to bid him goodbye at the door. And she said, Jackie, come here. <laughs> Walked over there. She was in her house coat. She reached in her house coat. <laughs> Pulled out a magazine, yes, sir. opened it up to a liquor advertisement. And she said, Jackie, what is that? She said, it's alcohol, Mom. And she said, alcohol's bad, isn't it, Jackie? He said, yes, ma'am, it is bad. He, she said, it's bad, 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 isn't it? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, Jackie? He said, Mama, I'm a grown man. I'm, I know it's bad. She said, Jackie, yes, ma'am. It's bad, bad, bad. Held that thing up. She threw it down. She stomped on it with her little foot and said, it's bad, 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 bad. She looked at him. She said, Jackie, went down. He said, it's bad, Mama. It's bad, bad. She said, Jackie. He said, ma'am, it's bad, 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 bad. He said, I never drank a drop of alcohol Amen. in my life. That's right. Folks, I don't care what the world tells you. Sin is bad. Amen. It may become popular. Everybody may be doing it. Hey, in Noah's day, they were all doing it. Yep. In Lot's day down in Sodom and Gomorrah, everybody was doing it. It's still bad, Amen. and when you make excuses for it, and when you try to inch a little bit closer to it, and you don't run or rub folks the wrong way, and I'm not saying you've got to be ugly about things, That's but right. you need to let folks know where you stand Amen. on something, draw the line, and say, I ain't going any further than Amen. that. And I can be certain. Now, there's a lot of things I'm not certain about, but I can be certain that sin is Bad, it is never good, regardless of what they tell you. Sin is always bad. I won't tell you the whole story, but many of you probably know the name Ted or Theodore Bundy. How many of you know that name? He was a mass killer in America. They don't know how many people he, I heard uh, James Dobson talk to him when he was on death row down in the Stark prison in Florida. And he said, Dr. Dobson, I don't know how many women I've killed. He said, I know of 40 or 50, it's probably more than that. They traced him and where he had been, the area he'd been in, that there was 200 unexplained deaths of young women in those areas. That's how bad he was. It got started when he picked up a magazine in a trash bin behind a newsstand, and it was one of these true detective magazines where it talks about, you know, the brutal killings and whatnot. And then when he first saw that, he quickly folded it up and threw it in the can. The next month, he happened to be back behind that same store, same trash can again, and something said, that magazine was in that can. And he went over and looked, and there was some magazines there. And he looked through them, and there was another one. But this time, he opened it up and looked at it a little bit. To make a long story short, he began reading those things every month from that trash bin where they threw out the last issue of the magazines. And it began to settle in his mind. And the more he thought, he wondered, what would it be like to strangle somebody? And he was raised, as far as I don't know what 
religious background, but he said, as a child, we went to, went to Sunday school. Whole family went to church. And then one night, he did it. And the next morning, he couldn't li hardly live with himself. He said, I can't believe I did that. He said, I'll never do that again. But sin had a grip on him now. Yes, it was six months before he thought about, man, what a thrill that was in that perverted mind. The wages of sin is death. Okay. The way of life is above to the wise yep. that he may depart from hell beneath. Amen. And I don't care how old you are, what you thought about, or there's probably folks right here in tonight, some, maybe some of you young folks thinking about, I wonder what it would be like to fill in the blank. I can tell you what it's going to be like. Let me show you yourself 10 or 20 years from now out there with a we'll work for food sign. Yes, sir, right. Out there sitting there with old shaggy and whatnot, your eyes all, you know. Yeah. You can be certain that sin is bad. Amen. Something else you can be certain of. Judgment is sure. Amen. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. So then every one of us shall uh, uh, give account of himself and to God. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, now, you understand the Bible. Everybody doesn't go to the same judgment. That's right. Jesus one time will sit down on his uh, throne, uh, throne of his glory, and he'll bring before him all nations. They'll all be judged. But there is a judgment in life whether you're saved or whether you're lost. Amen. If you're lost, you're going to hit what's, hit what's called the white throne judgment. If you're saved, you're going to hit what's called the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And either way, you will be judged for what you've done in this body. Now, if you're saved, you can judge your sin now. Amen. The Bible says if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged out in the future. Right. But if you don't judge it now, God may judge it in this life, or he may judge it at the judgment seat of Christ. So you want to get your sins under the blood yes, sir. as far as, as your, your uh, state, your standing, as to just where you are. Amen. But there is a judgment. Now, you may beat judgment in this life. There are plenty of folks who've committed crimes and never got caught for. Amen. I thank God there's some things I did as a kid. Nobody ever found out who Amen. did them. And thank God they're under the blood and forgotten. Amen. And I'm not going to tell anybody what they are. Amen. Right. But most of the time, if you do something really horrendous, you're going to get caught for it. Yep. And there is a judgment, and you'll stand before a judge and a jury or something, and they will pronounce sentence on you. And every guy down in, in, a, in a prison, almost without exception, there are a few that are innocent down there, I realize that. But 98% of them are there because Amen. they did something wrong, and they had to face the consequences for it. Amen. You can be certain that there is a judgment coming. If you're unsaved... You're heading for a judgment. Amen. And let me say this. If you're saved and you know Christ is Savior, some of your neighbors are heading for judgment. Amen. And some of your relatives are. And some of the guys you work with and some of the kids you go to school for, if they drop dead today, they're heading for the white throne judgment. Yes, sir. You ever read about that judgment? You find it over in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. He says, I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. If Donald Trump's an unsaved man, he's going to hit that judgment the same way as the homeless guy sitting out on the street. The rich and the poor, the Bible says, meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Yes, sir. It says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. You see, God has a bookkeeping system, Amen. and he has recorded everything you ever have done, everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever wanted to do, and unless you get saved and the blood of Christ covers those things, that's what you're going to face Amen. at the white throne judgment. Yeah. 
out in Utah somewhere. They have a place out there, and that's why that fellow, I can't remember his name, he's had to leave the country, he's in hiding. Uh, 